He was one of the most notorious and feared men of the Second World War. Joseph Mengele was known inside of Auschwitz as the Angel of Death. Such was his brutal and barbaric reputation for carrying out deadly human experiments upon the prisoners inside the Birkenau complex. Mengele was someone who administered gas within the gas chambers and selected inmates to be sent to their deaths. His fate at the end of the war was for some time a mystery as he slipped through the net of the advancing Soviets and Americans. He managed to live out the rest of his life in South America and was assisted to flee to Argentina by a network of other FSS members and he allegedly died in 1979 at the age of 67. But because of the notoriety of Mengele, there were exhumations of his body and remains performed and his grave was opened to make sure that one of the Second World War's most evil men was certainly him and was most certainly dead. Today we look at opening the grave of Mengele. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Joseph Mengele was born on the 16th of March 1911 and he, as a young man, attended a number of different universities to study medicine. He earned a PhD in physical anthropology from the University of Munich, but in 1937 he began working for the Institute of Hereditary Biology and Racial Hygiene in Frankfurt. He worked as an assistant to a man who was known for carrying out research on twins, but to begin with he did not actively support the Nazis. He had become a member of the SA, the brown shirts, but then lost interest. Mengele believed that Germans were biologically superior to all other races, and in 1938 he joined the Nazi party and then the SS. He continued to work as a scientist and attempted to prove that the German Aryan race was superior. As the Second World War broke out, Mengele was drafted into the German army, and he volunteered for medical service within the Waffen SS, and worked for the SS Race and Resettlement Main Office in occupied Poland, and he was then dispatched to the Eastern Front as a medical officer. He saw some of the brutality of the Eastern Front, and his division slaughtered thousands of civilians, and he obtained the Iron Cross Second and First Class, and rose throughout the ranks of the SS. On the 30th of May 1945, Joseph Mengele was sent to Auschwitz concentration camp. In the years before, the Commandant Rudolf Hurst had created the largest site of slaughter within the occupied Second World War Nazi lands, and Mengele was dispatched to Auschwitz to serve as one of the camp's physicians. He worked specifically inside of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the main extermination complex of the camp, and thousands of people were being sent to the site every day to be slaughtered. Mengele's most primitive duties inside of Auschwitz were to patrol the ramps where prisoners were sent to the camp, and he would then choose those who were not fit enough to work to be sent immediately to their deaths. He was noted patrolling the selection ramps with his white coat, dispatching thousands of people to the gas chambers, with SS guards driving them there, where they were killed shortly after. He was also someone who administered the gas into the gas chambers, the Zyklon B, as all doctors were the ones who did this. Over time, Joseph Mengele was appointed the chief physician for Auschwitz-Birkenau, before his work in the selections, Mengele was known as the Angel of Death. One former prisoner stated, We feared his visits more than anything else, because we never knew whether he would permit us to live. He was free to do whatever he pleased with us. But one of the most notorious things that Mengele did inside of Auschwitz was to conduct sadistic experiments upon specific groups of inmates. Many of his investigations permanently disfigured victims and led to their deaths. Some inmates were killed by Mengele so he could just perform their autopsy. He had inmates sterilised, would give them diseases to assess their bodies, and he also got involved in conducting unnecessary surgery without any form of pain relief. Mengele would regularly send some of his colleagues at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Anthropology body parts and organs that he had cut and taken from the prisoners of Auschwitz. One inmate stated about him that, he was capable of being so kind to the children, to have them become fond of him, to bring them sugar, to think of the small details in their daily lives, and to do things we would genuinely admire, and then next to that, the crematorious smoke, and these children tomorrow, or in half an hour, he is going to send them there. Well that is where the anomaly lay. He would experiment upon children prisoners, and introduced himself to them as Uncle Mengele, and offered them sweets, but within minutes he would have them killed. 
Another one of his victims later stated that Mengele visited us as a good uncle, bringing us chocolates. Before applying the scalpel or syringe, he would say, don't be afraid, nothing is going to happen to you. He injected chemical substances, performed surgery on TV's spine. After the experiments, he would bring us gifts. In the course of later experiments, he had pins inserted into our heads. The puncture scars are still visible. One day he took TV away. My brother was gone for several days. When he was brought back, his head was all dressed in bandages. He died in my arms. His most infamous tests were conducted upon twins, and he did some harrowing things, including amputating healthy limbs, transfusing blood unnecessarily, and he even tried to sew twins back to back to try and create conjoined twins. As well as this, he would inject substances into the eyes of the inmates to try and change their eye colour. It was said that in his offices, there were regularly the eyes of inmates pinned onto the walls. As the Red Army advanced at the beginning of 1945, Mengele transferred to the Gross Rosen camp, and he took with him two boxes of specimens and his records. Mengele then in February fled Gross Rosen, and he travelled to Czechoslovakia disguised as a Wehrmacht officer. He was detained briefly by the Americans, but as he did not have an SS blood group to two, he was released within weeks under the false name of Fritz Ullmann. After a number of months on the run, he even went back to recover his Auschwitz records, and he escaped Germany finally in April 1949. He knew if captured that he would be executed, and he managed to utilise the rat lines established to pass to Genoa under the alias Helmut Gregor, and he then sailed to Argentina in July 1949. He worked in Buenos Aires as a carpenter, but there has been disturbing evidence that has emerged that Mengele may have been practising medicine without a licence there, and may have performed some backstreet procedures on women. Mengele managed to obtain an Argentinian foreign resident permit under his real name, but he then lived relatively comfortable in Argentina. His son and widowed sister-in-law also travelled to him, and he passed through Europe for a ski holiday even. But Mengele was wanted, and his name cropped up during Nuremberg trials, and there were many who were working actively to hunt him down. The authorities knew that he was in Argentina, but in his final years he was looked after by another family, and in 1977 his son visited him in his bungalow, and later claimed that his father was an unrepentant Nazi. But Mengele's health had been declining for some years, and he suffered a stroke in 1976, and had high blood pressure. On the 7th of February 1979, whilst he was visiting his friends on the Brazilian coastal retreat of Bertioga, Mengele suffered a heart attack whilst he was swimming, and before help could get to him, he died from drowning. But then in Embu das Artes in Brazil, Mengele was then buried under the name of Wolfgang Gerhard, one of his aliases. There had been many people over the years who claimed to see Mengele, and he was one of the most hunted and searched for Nazi war criminals. A mock trial was even held for him in his absence, and different governments tried their best to locate him. However, in May 1985, the house of one of his friends, Hans Sevmeyer, was raided, and they found a coded address book, and copies of letters sent and received from Mengele. They then found information that Sevmeyer had been notified of Mengele's death whilst he was swimming on holiday. With this, the authorities then managed to locate Mengele's grave, and on the 6th of June 1985, his grave was opened, and his remains were exhumed, and then extensive forensic exams took place. American scientists managed to look at the body, and they concluded that the remains were of a Caucasian male, who was similar in age and height to Mengele, had Mengele's distinctive high brow, and also had Mengele's large gap between his front teeth. They confirmed that the remains had suffered a hip fracture, and it was thought that whilst he was at Auschwitz, Mengele did break his hip in a motorcycle accident. His skull was heavily analysed, and Dr Richard Helmer of the University of Kiel concluded that the skull was definitely that of Mengele's, due to the high brow and other features. No x-rays of Mengele were ever found, and comparisons of his fingerprints were not possible, as the skin tissue on the fingers had decomposed since his death. It was discovered that he may have had osteomyelitis, and he had a deformity of his lower right leg, as his left leg was 1.5 centimetres longer than his right. 
This could have affected his gait and the way he walked. There was also a hole found in the cheekbone of the skull. Some scientists claimed that this hole had been caused after death by water dripping from the screw in the coffin, or by the screw during the exhumation. Others believed that it was caused by Mengele's chronic sinus infections, and there are photographs that survive of the former doctor, who had a blemish on the left of his face, and also he complained of facial pain in life. On his remains it was also found that the skeleton had a shoulder fracture, and it wasn't possible to date when this happened, but in Mengele's diaries he did allegedly note that he had severe shoulder pain. Attempts were made to extract DNA from the remains, and it was to begin with too difficult for the FBI to do this, from hair samples on the body. But then Alec Jeffries from the University of Leicester agreed to try and extract DNA from the remains. He, along with his colleagues, managed to do this from a section of the femur, and using his son Rolf's DNA, it was proven without doubt that the body buried and analysed was in fact that of Joseph Mengele. There was more than a 99.9% match. Joseph Mengele was known as the Angel of Death for good reason. He was a brutal and ruthless doctor who worked inside of the deadliest concentration camp, and he would inflict some horrific experiments upon prisoners at the camp, and he would, if captured, had been condemned for his actions during the war. Interestingly, the skeleton of Mengele is stored today at the Sao Paulo Institute for Forensic Medicine, and teachers and doctors actually use his remains to teach other students, and today they willingly pick up the remains of a man who was responsible for the slaughter of thousands of people and horrific experiments within Auschwitz. He was certainly the angel of death. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.